All right, let's go uh, now to uh, Florida, and we'll talk with Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Hello. Hi. What have you got for us tonight, Ashley? I have a, um, wanted to ask you a question about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, I had actually asked if someone says F the Holy Spirit, uh-huh. Is that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Um, um, did I just blaspheme by asking that question? I know it's kind of silly, but uh-huh. I'm having thoughts and it's right. saying that. No, I understand. I'm actually- I understand, Ashley. No, I understand exactly where you're coming from with your question. First, I want to assure you uh, that you have not blasphemed the Holy Spirit by asking the question. You, my friend are loved and accepted, and you are free to ask any question about any scriptural matter, and God is not threatened in the least. And uh, what you've got is maybe a little bit of obsessive thinking there. You've got some thoughts that are perplexing you and plaguing you, and you worry about them, and you analyze them, and you analyze your recent performance and your recent speech and what words you've used. And you're just kind of wondering, did I mess this up? Did I go too far? Did I entertain a thought that ruined my salvation? Did I blaspheme the Spirit by having some profanity go through my head? And the answer is no, 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 no. No to all of those. You're good. Uh, And here's why I can say that so confidently, because... What's happening with blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, when you see this, uh, you see it right there in Matthew, what he's talking about is ascribing to Jesus uh, the, the work of Satan. In other words, uh, they didn't believe that Jesus was who he said he is. And so he did a miracle, and they said, well, this is of Satan. And so that was the work of the Holy Spirit, but they were trying to say that it was the work of the enemy, Satan. And so that's what it meant uh, to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, and that's what Jesus was saying. So today, if the Holy Spirit stands at the door of your heart and knocks, and he wants to come in, and you say, Well, you know what? Uh, I've decided that Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, that he didn't die for my sins, that he didn't rise from the dead, and I don't want him in my life. So there you have it. If that was your decision at the moment of salvation, then that would be blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So that's why that is the one and only unforgivable sin, as Jesus describes. So what is it? Well, of course it's unforgivable because you're rejecting the forgiveness. You're saying, no, thank you, Jesus. I don't want it. I don't want salvation. I don't want forgiveness. Now, the reason I'm explaining this in such detail, Ashley, is I want you to realize you have not committed that sin. So this is not about a cuss word. This is not about the F-bomb. This is not about some profanity going through your mind for 10 seconds or 100 times or whatever. It's not about obsessive thinking. It's not about obsessive thoughts. It's not about profanity. And it's not about you accidentally saying something that God just gets ticked off at and he says, well, forget you because you said it. No, this is a deliberate hearing and rejecting of the gospel message. Uh, It was 2,000 years ago, first of all, those present in Matthew chapter 12, when we talk about this, uh, those present were saying, I don't believe Jesus is who he says he is. I believe he's of Satan. He's not of God. He's not the Son of God. For us today, the equivalent would be saying, you know what? I've decided I don't want to be saved, and I don't believe Jesus is who he says he is and I don't think he died for my sins, and I don't think he rose from the dead, and I don't think he has anything to offer me, and I reject the gospel. Well, if you're already saved, Ashley, which I'm assuming you are, that you've already understood the gospel and called upon Jesus to be saved, it's too late for you. (laughs) You are forever saved. It's too late. You can't ruin it. You can't mess this up. 
It's not about you and what you're doing. It's about Jesus Christ and what he did. So just recognize the beauty of your salvation. Remember the promises of Jesus. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Nobody can snatch you out of my hand. Even when you're faithless, he remains faithful. Nothing separates you from the love of Christ. So when you realize those promises, then the thought of, oh my goodness, did I say a cuss word? Did I think a cuss word? Did I use the F-bomb? Did I somehow insult Jesus to the point that he's done with me? And the answer is no, 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 no. Jesus will never leave you no matter what. That's what salvation is. Salvation is everlasting life. It's not temporary life. And you have total forgiveness, not partial forgiveness. So you have been forgiven and cleansed once for all, for all time, Ashley, that's the kind of forgiveness you possess, and that's the kind of eternal life you possess. You know, eternal life, the kind that endures forever. If it didn't endure forever, then it wouldn't be eternal. So I'll put you back on and see. Does that help, Ashley, with your concern tonight? Yes, that helped me. Thank you so much. You bet. Well, uh, call us back, and uh, love hearing from you.